The next one we're going to get involved with was the Last Chance Cripple. Just as well. Huh? Last Chance Cripple. This is um, a, uh, it started out with a, from, by Rene Harrop. This one is more of the Calabatus Last Chance. Harrop's original Last Chance was a PMD. But that style, and that's what this is as a style, has been carried on to all the mayflies now. So it's still the last chance because it's the style, the way it's tied in. But it's not, this one happens to be Calabatus, not a PMD. Now, this one, the, this cripple consists of a Calabatus goose biops. Uh, I got these from Crown Hunter. And one of the problems, I know I did this once before, but these have been in the bag and sitting in my drawer for a while. These become brittle. What you want to do is you want to put them in some moisture. So I put, this morning I put them in a wet, on a wet paper, wet paper towel and brought them in. So now they'll be pliable. So um, I would highly advise you before you start tying anything with biops, that you know at least soak them in water or put them on a wet paper towel or something just to add moisture to the biop otherwise it becomes too brittle and the next thing you know it's breaking on you so the body is the biop okay um he's calling out baniki uh, on his recipe uh, what i'm using is tan uni thread eight aught uh, I like Unithread. If you guys have been watching me tie enough, you know 90% of the stuff I do is Unithread. I do like Baniki, uh, but I didn't figure most of you guys would have any Baniki, so I'm going with the Unithread. Vivas will work. Um, anything in the 72 denier would should probably be fine. Even slightly smaller in 72 denier would be good. Vivas, uh, Baniki, um, who, who else has got it? Mountain, uh, Ultra Thread has got it. So, you know, that would be fine. So don't again on the recipe. Don't get caught up on it. Um, we've got lemon wood duck tail with either a shuck of ginger zelon or ginger. And this is out of the fly shop. They're called poly polytron, which is uh, kind of like antron yarn. So uh, whichever one you guys will want to play with, we'll, we'll let you let you try either or. Uh, we then have a uh, thorax of uh, tan material. Tan can either be hairline dubbing, either tan or sand, which I have here, or you could just use some antron dubbing in sand or light hair's ear. So whichever, whatever color. Again, this is a calabatus, the one we're tying tonight, which has got a light tan thorax and a kind of grayish tan. Uh, tan body, so that's why the Adams works so well as Calabatus is, is a cheater. Um, then the wing is going to be CDC, a light done CDC wing. Uh, with hackle is going to be Grizzly Saddle. So Let's get started. So we can take a uh, size 12. Uh, we can do a size 12 dry fly hook. The 102 wide, what the advantages of the Y, if you would, is it's a very light wire hook. Um, where's the fly pass from? Is it still out there? If you take a look at it and you look at that wire, it's an extremely light wire. It's here somewhere. They're in between sizes too. Yeah, the 102 Ys are all odd size. So they're 13. Oh, that's why you said they're 19. Yeah, I got 19. Yeah. 13 15. Yeah, they're all odd sizes because the shank length is of the larger size and the gape is of the smaller size. So it's like a one extra long ultra light hook shank. But if you don't have it, standard dry fly hook will work out just as well. Works out just as well. We'll just 
just go, well, grab the wire there. And, then, and when, you, when you see it, it is a very, very light wire hook. <coughs> okay. Start it at about the two-thirds point. Get your thread started. And at this point, we're going to add just a very few fibers. And I've got a few feathers on here. That's why it's all tied together. So don't worry about it. You want three or four fibers only. You don't want to get too carried away with how many fibers uh, of the um, wood duck you're getting. Wood duck's going to be about shank length. Okay? Tie it in on top. And at this point, I'm going to use the Zelon. You can just take a little bit of Zelon. And your Zelon is going to be just a few minor strands, uh, or if you were using Antron, uh, just a few strands. And it's only going to be about half. You're going to make sure you cut it to where it's only half, and you can spiral this down half the length of the tail. Okay, you don't want it to be the full length of the tail, so about half the length is where your Z-Lon is going to be. Come on, get out of there. Okay, there's your Z-Lon. Now here comes the tough part. We're going to go with the goose bio. When you take a look at your bias and you take it off at the bottom, what you're going to do is literally strip off the goose bias. Now I want you to notice something. See this notch where I'm pointing to? Can you see the flat that it notches? That notch will tell you if your rib will have a ridge on it or if it will be smooth. If you tie it in with the ridge up, we should end up with the notch up. We should end up with a ridge. If not, then we'll just take it off and do it the other way. You know, I mean, it's not that hard. But the ridge will tell you which way it's, it really should create for you. And there it is. And there's the ridge. See it? Each turn is right in front of the next one. So we now have, if Somebody called it a fuzzy rib. See it? Can you zoom in, zoom in on that any tighter, Ray? Can they get a good look at the, mm -hmm. the ridges standing up? Can you Bruce. see that? Show me that slide again, Bruce. Yeah. Okay. Then we're going to tie it off. Three or four turns, cut off your excess. That's what I used to do this. No, this is the newsletter. Okay. That's the newsletter. Okay, so now we have the, um, the biops tied on. Okay. Next, we're going to dub our thorax. I'm going to use the antron. I'm going to take the hairs here just because I like it. Again, not too thick. This this thorax kind of acts very similar to the last thorax. It's just really acting as a location. So don't get too carried away with how thick and how large it is. Now this fly, you can come a little bit closer to the eye. Can you see how much space I have left at the eye? Not very much. Okay. Uh, actually, I need to be back one turn. I got one turn too many. There it is. This is the space where we're going to tie in our CDC and our hackle in this bare hook shank spot. Okay. Now. At this point, I like to tie in my hackle. Okay. And 
for a size 12, which is what I have here, I like to take three CDC feathers. Um, some of the folks will talk about just two. I like to take three. I like it a little bit fuller. Um, but that's up to you, two or three, whichever suits your fancy here. You want to even up the tips. Tips get even. There we go. <coughs> even up the tips. Because the tips are going to be tied in over the eye. Okay? And again, you're looking for about one hook shank to be tied in over the eye. Wrapping from the thorax up towards the eye. And then I take one or two turds just to kind of stand that up. The reason I want to stand up the CDC just a little bit is it's almost impossible if you don't to get the, the tip it through the eye if it's laying down over the eye. Okay, and then thread behind. I'm going to cut my CDC slightly longer than my thorax is. Okay, that adds to the flotation. Then, wrap my dry fly hackle. I go back to the eye. I would finish it. Trim my hackle, slightly open scissor points, take my hackle and I push it, and there's a cripple. As uh, George said, it's identical to Quigley's cripple. It's just Quigley uses deer hair. He uses deer hair, almost the identical type, but uh, this one is using CDC. I like CDC better than deer hair, but you know what?